Excel has over 470 formulas, so knowing which one to use can be rather overwhelming. That's why in this video, I'm going to teach you some of the most important functions through what I'll call the fast track method, where we'll group formulas into five steps so you can remember them easily. So in step one of the stairway to Excel formula mastery, we have math functions. And the first one we look at is the aggregate function. In a table like this one, where we have the product and the price, if you wanted to find the average, you might think of just using the average function and selecting all of the prices, but you'll notice we get an error. That's because Sprite over here has an error as well. So it's unable to calculate the average. That's where we can use the aggregate function to find the average instead. So we'll type equals aggregate hit the tab key there and this is actually 19 different functions in one in this case we'll go for the average which is number one comma and as the options here's where we can tell it to ignore any kind of errors which is right here ignore error values number six comma and the array is the area we want to find the average of so with all of these figures right here we'll close a parenthesis and hit enter in this case, we found the average, but you can obviously find the maximums, minimums, and much more as well. And if you want to follow along with this video, you can download the free Excel file in the video description as well. Continuing with math functions, and if you ever want to generate a random list of numbers, you can use the equals rand array function. Hit the tab key there, and we can specify how many rows we want. Let's say we want 10 rows, comma, 3 columns, comma, and a minimum, so a starting number at 1, comma, all the way to 100. So the random numbers are anywhere from 1 to 100, comma, and we want them to be exact numbers, so integers and not decimals, let's say. We'll hit enter, and you can see we get that list of random numbers. We could even change this from true to false, and now they're all gonna have decimals as well. Moving up to step two in the fast track method, and here we have date functions. So let's take a look. Over here, you can see I have the order date, the delivery date, and we want to find the differences between these two in terms of days, months, and years. For this, we'll use a formula called dated if, which actually very few people know about. Let's take a look by typing equals date. You'll notice that it doesn't show up here. You actually need to just type it manually. So dated if, open up the parenthesis, and we want to find the order date, comma, select the delivery date as well, comma. And now we need to tell it whether we want the difference expressed as a day, a month, or a year. In this case, it's D for days in quotations and close the parenthesis and hit enter. You can see the difference between these two is 90 days and I can just drag that down. To do the same thing for the months, we simply need to change the quotations there from a D to an M. So let me do that for these two columns over to the side quickly. Awesome, so with that same function, we've managed to find the months as well as the differences in years. You'll notice though that for the years, even if I expand this by adding some decimals, it doesn't really give me the precise number of years. So in this one, 90 days, it would probably be around 0.25 years. If you wanted that level of precision, you could use the year frac function instead, which is going to do the same thing, but find the exact number of years. So this is the start date, comma, this is the end date, and I'm just going to close that and hit enter. You can see there it's about 0.25, so it's a lot more precise than this one over here. These two date functions that we just looked at don't actually account for weekends. So let's take a look at that. You can see right now we just have the full number of days, but what if we would just want the working days in difference, so without accounting for the weekends? For that, we can use the network days formula, this one right here, hit the tab key and the start date is the same, comma, and this is the delivery date. But you can tell right here how big the difference is between just having all of the days or just having the working days. This only accounts for weekends, but if you also wanted to account for holidays, you would just hit the comma again and add the holidays right here. Once we get all of these results through formulas, the next step is to visualize them to make them look presentable. And a great way to do that is using chart templates like the ones HubSpot is kindly providing us. 
By clicking the link in the description below, you can access a huge variety of Excel graph templates completely for free. The download includes an Excel file with instructions on how to use these templates, along with a range of chart types to visualize your data. You can easily modify the data within these templates, and the charts will automatically update. These templates can accommodate either one column of data or multiple columns depending on your needs. I personally find this graph template most useful for visualizing all of my data and deciding which chart to go with as it's quite unusual to have templates that show so many options at once. So I highly recommend you head over to the link in the description below to download these completely free chart templates from HubSpot to level up your Excel game. And thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Moving to step three in the fast track method, and here we have text formulas. These are primarily used to clean and to manipulate data. So let's take a look. Over here, you'll notice we have this table. Let's suppose that we want to join all of these columns into one and simply separate these values with a comma. For that, we can use equals text join. That's a function that we'll use and the delimiter, we said we just wanted a comma there. Let's add a space so they're not all crammed together. Close those quotations, comma. And let's say we want to ignore any empty cells. It doesn't really apply to us as we don't have any empty ones, comma. And the text we want to select is just this entire row. So we have all the way from the order to the sales. We can close that parenthesis and hit enter. You'll notice that it's all now part of just one row. I can drag it down and the same thing happens to all. If we have a text join formula, odds are we also have a text split. So let's take a look at that one by going to equals, text, split, and it works in the same way. This is the text that we want this time, comma, and suppose we want to split it by the commas. So as the column delimiter, we want to split these into columns. So in quotations, we'll put that comma in there, close the quotations, close the parenthesis, and hit enter. Now you can see we're back to the original state. I can drag this down as well, much like before. Continuing with text formulas, and now we have the cleaning side. Suppose we have a table like this one that has inconsistent spacing and also inconsistent capital letters. To fix this, we can first use the equals trim function, hit the tab key, and what this does is it's gonna get rid of those extra spaces. So you can see Bill no longer has that huge space before, and it only has one space in the middle. I can drag that down, and all of these names are now looking better. On top of that, we can add another function, which is the proper. We'll add that just before the trim, so we'll put proper. And what this does is it's gonna convert everything to just have a capital letter at the start of a word. Open up the parenthesis, we'll keep the trim in there, and just wrap it around. Hit enter, and now that first one's looking good, and all the others as well. So as you can see, text cleaning is actually quite easy in Excel, as long as you know the right formulas. Now moving to more powerful functions in this step 4, we now have logic. So let's take a look at it. Over here, you can see that we have this table, and suppose we want to find out all of those rows that are over 250 in quantity. For that, we can do a simple if. And it's gonna say that if this test, the logical test just says that this quantity here has to be greater than 250, comma. If that is the case, we'll just put a yes in quotations, comma. And if it's not the case, we can just leave it empty. We can do that by adding two quotations with nothing inside. That just tells Excel that we don't want to see anything. We'll close up parenthesis and hit enter. Now we can drag this all the way down here. And you'll notice that these say yes, as the quantity is greater than that 500. Now, what if we have more than one logical condition? For example, what if we want them to have over 250 in quantity, but we also want them to be equals to olives as the product? Well, for that, we're gonna add another if statement. Hit the tab key there. And now, as a logical test, you can see we only have one option for it. To add multiple, we're gonna need the AND function in here. That's gonna say that 1. The quantity has to be greater than 250, like we saw before. And the second test is gonna say that the products right here need to be equals to, in quotations, olives. 
close the quotations, close the parenthesis, and now we need to continue with the if. So the whole and area is now the logical test, comma, and the value if true, so if both of these criteria are met, we want to say yes in quotations, and if not, we're simply going to leave it empty again with quotations, close the parenthesis and hit enter, and let's drag this all the way down. You can see here that Harley does have indeed olives and a quantity greater than 250, hence why they're in this list. Finally, what if we made an exception and said that either they're over 250 in quantity or they're equals to wines? Both of these should get a yes. Let's take a look at how to do that in this last option. So if, hit the tab key, and now it's not two conditions, but rather it's one condition or another. So we'll add the or function in here. And within it, we want to say either that the quantity is greater than 250, comma, or that the products are equals to, in quotations, wines. Close the quotations, close the parenthesis. That's the end of that or statement, comma, and the value, if true, we just want to say yes in quotations, comma, and if not, we'll leave it empty again. We can close that and drag it all the way down. Now let's see what's happening. This one is wines, and it's also a quantity of over 250, so it shows up correctly. But this one down here says that the quantity doesn't quite meet it, right? It's less than 250. That said, because the product is wines, and the condition we have is an or, it still shows up. In the last step of the stairway, we have lookup functions, and we'll go over some of the newer ones, so you might not have them depending on your Excel version. So let's take a look over here. You can see that we have these three tables, and suppose that we just want to merge them into one. For that, we can use equals vstack. That's a function, and the array is simply the table that we want to select. We want to select multiple, so we'll select this first one, by going to control shift down, control shift right, comma. Then we'll select the second one, again, control shift down, control shift right, comma. And finally, this third one over here, you can also select it with the mouse if that's what you prefer. Now we can just close the parenthesis and hit enter. And you can see we've been able to merge all three of these tables into one right here to the side super easily. The second lookup function that I wanted to show you is the group by, which essentially replaces pivot tables. So let's take a look over here. And in this table, suppose we want to find out the sum of sales by country. So sum up all of the Spain sales, all of the Italy sales, etc. into one group. We can do that by typing equals group by. And the row fields are all of the countries for us, comma. The values are all of the sales. And now, what do we want to do with the values? Well, under function, we want to sum all of these values. We'll close up parenthesis and hit enter. Now you can see we get the sales grouped by each of the countries with the total down below as well. In this scenario, we just have one row of data, which are all of the countries. But what if we wanted something like a matrix with the countries as well as the products on top? For that, we can use the equals pivot by function where the row fields are the same countries. So we'll select them over here with control shift down, comma. And now we have the columns and let's suppose that those are all of our products, comma. The values are simply the sales again, comma. And finally, the function, we want the sum of them, right? So we want them grouped by the sum. We'll close the parenthesis and hit enter. Now you can see what that looks like, where we have not just the country sum that you'll notice is exactly the same as these values right above, but we also have the breakdown by products as well. There's many other awesome Excel formulas like the filter, the XLOOKUP, or the index match, which you can learn how to do with this video over here or by taking our Excel course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.